In this video, we will identify the influence of the inertia of the surrounding fluid on the dynamics of a vibrating solid. We will quantify this added inertia through a coefficient called added mass. Here is the outline of the videos on the fluid at rest. Now that we have identified all the phenomena due to hydrostatic pressure, the dynamic effects can be addressed. And we will start with the so-called inertial effects. In order to give us a better idea, here is the linearized fluid force obtained previously. We have already studied the term generalizing the Archimedes force, the gradient stiffness term, and the force stiffness term. It is on this term of fluctuation of the stress that we will now work. To obtain the stress to be projected, we need to solve the Navier-Stokes equations at order 1 with the kinematic condition as boundary conditions. We will do this by neglecting the viscous effect and the compressibility effect. That is to say by considering the Stokes number large and the compressibility parameter small. We can also see that in this linearized form, the equations in the fluid at order 0 and 1 are fully uncoupled. We can therefore concentrate on order 1, since it is the stress fluctuation that interests us. Here is where we are in the set of equations of the problem. When the viscous terms have been neglected, the Navier-Stokes equations are called Euler equations, here in a linearized form. Since we are now dealing with the non-viscous fluid, we can simplify the kinematic condition. Indeed, from the mathematical point of view, now that we have no more Laplacian in the fluid dynamics equations, the order of the maximum spatial derivative for the velocity is 1, and we now have too many boundary conditions. From the physical point of view, since we have a non-viscous fluid, we can no longer impose a non-slipping condition on the fluid boundary. To take this into account, we transform the kinematic condition by projecting it onto the normal to the interface. By doing this, we now simply forbid the fluid to cross the wall. We can now solve the simplified set of equations. We will look for solutions with separate variables, q times phi, denoted u and p for velocity and pressure respectively. If we look carefully at the kinematic condition, which must be satisfied whatever x and t, we see that it imposes that q u is equal to the time derivative of q prime. Then, we see that the linearized Euler equations impose that q p is equal to the derivative with respect to time of q u, that is the second derivative of q prime. The problem is thus readily solved in time. Let us report this in the upper left corner. Now let's take the divergence of the second line of the Euler equation. Since the spatial and temporal derivative can switch, and by virtue of the incompressibility relation, the term on the left cancels. Only the term on the right remains, which becomes the Laplacian of P'. Let us now derive the kinematic condition with respect to time. The term du prime over dt on the left can be replaced by minus gradient of p prime. So we have a boundary condition that now relates to the pressure rather than the velocity. The Laplacian of p prime can now be written Laplacian of phi p equals zero. And similarly, since in the kinematic condition q prime dot appears on each side, we can write it with only the modal fields phi p and phi. Let us assume that we are able to solve these equations. It remains to calculate the stress fluctuation in the fluid and to project it in the consider mode. In this non-viscous case, sigma simply depends on the pressure. By transferring this into the expression of the fluid force and by taking out q prime dot, which does not depend on space, we obtain in an explicit way the fluid force where appears in factor the acceleration of the solid. All that remains is to introduce this into the oscillator equation. And since the force is proportional to q prime dot dot, we can put it directly in the inertia term with a coefficient ma that we called added mass. 
And here is finally the expression. The fluid structure problem in this approximation is now fully solved and we are now dealing with an oscillator equation with added mass. Let's now see this on some examples. The first example is that of a cylinder in translation. We assume the system to be infinite in the z direction perpendicular to the screen plane or long enough so that possible edge effect can be neglected. We therefore consider the problem to be two-dimensional. The equations to solve are Laplacian of phi p equals zero on omega f naught with as boundary conditions the kinematic condition previously obtained. In polar coordinates, this Laplace equation is given as follows, and the boundary condition become dp on dr in r equals one equals cos theta. The cos theta comes from the scalar product between ex and the normal, which is er. Looking for a solution of the Laplace equation which satisfies the boundary conditions and which does not tend to infinity when r tends to infinity, we find for phi p cosine theta on r. It remains to introduce this in the expression of the added mass. The surface integral becomes in this two-dimensional case a contour integral on a circle whose radius equals one. It takes a very simple form. We finally find m times pi for the dimensionless added mass. Going back to dimensional quantities, we find an added mass equal to rho naught times pi r squared. That is, an added mass equal to the mass of the fluid contained in a solid volume. One could be tempted to generalize this for all solid body motions, but it should be noted that this simple result is only valid to the particular case of the slender cylinder of circular cross-section. In this second example, we will both highlight the confinement effect and present some example of numerical resolution. It is a square oscillating horizontally in a rectangular cavity. With the chosen scaling, the square is of side one, the gap between the square and the cavity small e, and the large dimension of the rectangle small l. We take l sufficiently large so that the walls here in dotted line do not influence the result of our calculation. The equations that govern the pressure mode are similar to the previous case. The Laplace equation in the fluid domain, the kinematic condition. We simply add a rigid boundary condition on the edge of the rectangle. The numerical resolution of the system gives the pressure fields phi p presented in color levels. The calculation of the added mass then gives a much larger value in the confined case. This can be understood by noting that the pressure difference between the front and the back of the section is more important in the second case. We can also represent the modulus of the velocity according to this mode. For E equals dot five, we find that the velocity is about equal to one in the upper and lower channel, that it tends to zero quite quickly when moving away from the square, and that it becomes larger in small areas around the corners. In the confined case, for E equals dot one, we see that the velocity becomes very large in the constrictions. This important increase in the inertia of the fluid for the same acceleration of the solid is at the origin of the increase of the added mass coefficient. This observation gives us the idea of interpreting the added mass differently from energy considerations. The total kinetic energy of the system is the sum of the kinetic energy of the solid and the kinetic energy of the fluid. Note that this is a dimensionless version of the kinetic energy, which is expressed on the right using the correct physical units. Note also that the problem is two-dimensional, that the integral is a contour integral, and that it is therefore energy per unit length in the third direction. Using the fact that u prime equals q prime dot times phi u, we can put this kinetic energy in a form depending only on the velocity of the solid q prime dot. We let appear the integral of phi u squared on the fluid domain which must necessarily be equal to the added mass coefficient. Making this calculation with 3 we obtain the same coefficients as before. 
This allows us to propose an explanation for this large added mass coefficient. When we are dealing with strong confinements, a small movement of the solid would lead to a very large velocity of the fluid, and therefore a very large kinetic energy, contributing significantly to the total inertia of the system. It is by reasoning on the kinetic energy that we have realized the simple estimation of the added mass during an exercise of the practical sessions. We can compare the numerical results with our simplified model. We notice that the prediction is quite good in the confined cases and deviates from the numerical value when the confinement decreases. This is easily understood since in this case the kinetic energy in the narrow channel is no longer dominant in the integral of the total kinetic energy of the fluid. Before continuing, let us recall this important result. The inertia of the fluid plays as an added mass in the dynamics of the structure. We will now introduce the notion of mode coupling. This notion will be further developed during the tutorial exercises. Let's go back to our schematic view of the coupled fluid structure system, considering not only one modal oscillation, but n combined modal oscillations. The combination of the oscillation according to this set of modes leads to the kinematic condition depending on all modal velocities, which at first sight may seem rather complicated. But since we have linearized the equations, we are allowed to also decompose the fluid dynamics onto n modes denoted by i. Each of these modes describe the fluid dynamics following an oscillation in a single structure mode i, hence the index i on the structure displacement mode in the kinematic condition. Once we have solved each of the n fluid problems, we can express the total fluid stress as the sum over i of all the modal stresses and project this onto a structure mode denoted by J. These modal forces appear in the right member of the oscillator equations. And as we have already shown, in this inviscid case, the stress tensor depends only on the pressure and each modal contribution I is proportional to the acceleration, that is QI prime divided twice in time. We thus find inertial coupling on the right hand side involving the set of modal acceleration and coupling coefficient whose expression is given here. The coefficient mji is the integral on the surface of phi pi times phi j scalar n. To conclude, we have just shown how the fluid dynamics can induce a coupling between the modes of the structure. We can write this also in a matrix form. The new mass matrix of the system is the sum of the mass matrix of the structure, which is diagonal, and the matrix of inertial coupling coefficients. Thus, the problem, described on the basis of eigenmodes in vacuum, is no longer diagonal. It should be diagonalized again to find new eigenmodes of the coupled system as function of the eigenmodes in vacuum. This concludes the last video of the second session. We have just described the inertial effects of the fluid, which translate into added mass coefficients and even inertial coupling coefficients. Thank you for your attention and see you soon for other phenomena of oscillations of structure in a fluid at rest.